Right, I welcome members to the sixth meeting in 2016 of the Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee and as always ask members to switch off their mobile phones please. Agenda item number one is instruments subject to affirmative procedure. No points have been raised by our legal advisers on the Local Government Finance Scotland Order 2016 draft. Is the committee content with this please? Yes. Okay. Agenda item two, instruments subject to negative procedure. The National Health Service General Dental Services Scotland Amendment Regulations 2016, SSI 2016-53. This instrument contains some drafting errors. Firstly, Regulation 2.5 inserts new subparagraphs 1V and W in Part 1A of Schedule 2 to the National Health Service General Dental Services Scotland Regulations 2010, the principal regulations. As subparagraph 1V already exists, the new subparagraphs should have been inserted as 1W and X. Secondly, the provisions in Part 1A of Schedule 2 to the principal regulations apply to those persons who apply to join subpart A of the first part of the dental list in Scotland. Part 1A lists matters to be included in that application. The subpart A consists of a list of dentists and bodies corporate who have undertaken to provide general dental services in the health boards area. Part 2 of Schedule 2 to the principal regulations applies to those persons applying to join the second part of the dental list. Part 2 lists matters to be included in that application. The second part consists of dentists who are approved by a health service board, sorry, a health board to assist in the provision of general, den general dental services. There is an omission, as the Scottish Government intends that the revisions of the new subparagraphs 1V and W, as described above, should have been replicated within Part 2 of Schedule 2 of the Principal Regulations. The Scottish Government intends to lay an amending order early in the next parliamentary session to correct these errors. Does the Committee agree to draw the regulations to the attention of the Parliament on the general reporting ground, as they contain a couple of drafting errors? Yes. No points have been raised by our legal advisers on the Waste Management Licensing Scotland Amendment Regulations 2016, SSI 2016-40, the Reservoir Scotland Regulations 2016, SSI 2016-43, the Children and Young People Scotland Act 2014, Relevant Services in Relation to Children at Risk of Becoming Looked After, etc., Order 2016, SSI 2016-44, the Carbon Accounting Scheme, Scotland Amendment Regulations 2016, SSI 2016-46. The Public Contract, Scotland Amendment Regulations 2016, SSI 2016-47. The Orkney Islands Landing of Crabs and Lobsters Order 2016, SSI 2016-50. The Water and Sewerage Services Licenses, Cross-Border Application Scotland Order 2016, SSI 2016-52. The Scottish Sentencing Council, Submission of Business Plan, Order 2016, SSI 2016-55. The Regulation of Investigatory Powers, Prescription of Ranks and Positions, Scotland Order 2016, SSI 2016-56. The Personal Injuries, NHS, NHS Charges, Amounts, Scotland Amendment Regulations 2016, SSI 2016-59. The Children's Hearing, Scotland Act 2011, Safeguarders Panel Amendment Regulations 2016, SSI 2016-61. The Teachers Superannuation and Pension Scheme, Scotland Amendment Regulations 2016, SSI 2016-62. The Croft House Grant, Scotland Regulations 2016, SSI 2016-63. Nor the Registration Services, Fees, etc. Scotland Amendment Regulations 2016, SSI 2016-64. Is the committee content with these instruments, please? Yes. Agenda item number three is instruments not subject to any parliamentary procedure. The Procurement Reform Scotland Act 2014, Commencement number three and Transitional Provisions Order 2016, SSI 2016-30. The order commences, amongst other provisions, the Schedule to the Procurement Reform Scotland Act 2014, insofar as not already in force. This provision is of no effect, as the schedule has already been brought into force on the 28th of September 2015 by virtue of a previous order, which is SSI 2015-331. Does the committee therefore agree to draw the order to the attention of the Parliament under the general reporting ground, as it contains a provision of no effect? John? Yes, I mean, I think this is unfortunate, and I take the, the point that legally this has no effect, but uh, for the ordinary reader of what's been going on, I think there is scope for confusion, 
did this come into force on the 28th of September, as it actually did, or did it come into force uh, on the 18th of April this year, as it would have appeared uh, was going to happen? Um, so I, I just feel there perhaps should be some way of this being officially noted that to, cl to clarify it for the public eye, because depending presumably on what somebody looks at first, they, they could be confused as to whether it came in on the 18th of April or on the 28th of September last year. Yeah, thank you. Perfectly fair point. Can I just make the point, though, that this order brings in other provisions which do come in in April, so it's not as if the entire instrument is redundant. Uh, but there is a fair point there, John. I support what um, John Mason has said and wonder if there is anything that the government can easily and reasonably do to, to clarify um, the situation, uh, not for the experienced reader, but for the lay person to, to try and just make it better and more easily accessible to, to those who might wish to look at this. Indeed. Well, sh clearly that's now on the record. We will draw it to the Parliament's attention and maybe the government can consider how it might be able to amend the record, as it were, where people will actually address it in order to get them to the right answer. Uh, are we otherwise content to report that, though? Yes. Thank you. No points have been raised by our legal advisers on the Reservoir Scotland Act 2011 Commencement Number 5 and Transitional Provision Order 2016. SSI 2016-42, nor on the Children and Young People Scotland Act 2014, Commencement Number 11, Order 2016, SSI 2016-60. Is the committee content with these instruments, please? Yes. Okay. Which brings us to agenda item four, the Bankruptcy Scotland Bill, and this is for the committee to consider the Scottish Government's response to its Stage 1 report on that bill. It's expected the committee will consider Stage 2 uh, on the 23rd of February. Do members have any comments, Stuart? Um, uh, can I, first of all, welcome the uh, response from the, 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 the Minister for Business, Energy and Tourism, uh, which um, I, I think basically accepts what the committee has said in regard to uh, the bill that's before us. I just raised the relatively small point that I understand there are going to be some printing changes which in this particular case um, I informally understand simply relate to punctuation. Um, nonetheless, uh, when changes are made, even though there is no decision for us to make in that regard, and I accept that that is the case, um, I think it would be helpful if uh, we had a very brief uh, response from the government simply noting that such printing changes are going to be made and giving us a broad description of what they might be, so that if there are changes occur um, that have unexpected effect or people notice them, they can at least see where they've come from. Um, I haven't personally uh, met printing changes at this stage of the passage of our piece of legislation, and although I'm perfectly comfortable, I'm just, as usual, being my pernickety self about process. Convener. John. Um, I would support what uh, Stuart Stevenson has said. Um, and I think it might be worth perhaps um, Minister referring to this in the Sage 3 debate um, to, or elsewhere to essentially reinforce the view that while these um, amendments have been made in terms of essentially punctuation, that there is no intention, uh, no policy intention to change any of the meanings um, uh, that, that might appear to have been changed um, uh, and it would be helpful if that was on the record that the, the, the previous um, acts were, were, were where we should go as a point of reference um, to, for, the, for the proper meaning, notwithstanding the new changes uh, yeah. of punctuation, if that is a reasonable thing to, to, to seek. My understanding, thank you for those comments, my understanding is that we haven't yet seen the changes which are being proposed, so we can't actually comment on whether or not they are only punctuation, but that is clearly the expectation. Um, uh, I had at one point suggested that we might have an amendment which took all the bits of punctuation out, but processes don't allow that because it 
they have to be brought forward at the right point of every bill. So it would be madness to have amendments for, for dots and commas. So we'll have to see if we can sort this out. But can I say, I, I, I do share the expressed views that we really should have somewhere down in black and white what has been changed, um, even if it's not actually formally approved within the process. I mean, there is no question that a, a change in punctuation can change the meaning mm. of a piece of legislation. So. Uh, while, of course, I am very um, sure that the government will have made very um, taken all precautions not to change the meaning by inserting punctuation where before there was different punctuation or none, um, it would be good to have that on the record that they have yeah. addressed that thought yeah. at least. It is interesting to reflect that a principal punctuation is not supposed to be capable of changing legislation, but maybe occasions where it does. Stuart? Uh, I was just going to make that point that I understand that in reading uh, legislation the punctuation must be ignored just as indeed the headings are also not part of the legislation and add nothing to the meeting. So uh, that's my understanding but of course I am not a lawyer and I will always defer to those who give me legal advice. Right. right. Well I, I, I am happy to be <laughs> corrected in that regard and if I've raised a spurious point then so be it. No, I, don't think, sorry, I don't think you have raised a spurious point. I think there might be occasions when it inadvertently it does because you know, without the punctuation there's more than one meaning. With the punctuation it might have more than one meaning and courts might have to sort it out. John? Yes, I mean, I mean slightly more positively if you like. Oh. Um, I, I mean I do think uh, the government response is very positive yep. and a really quite an endorsement, I think, of the committee's work. Uh, the fact that we're all agreed now, I think, that restructuring the bill at this stage would not be a good idea, mm -hmm. although clearly there's lots of ways it could have been structured. Uh, the whole thing about uh, abbreviations, uh, they're taking on board the comments we've made, uh, the use of the word forthwith and the use of the word or. Uh, so I have to say that's, I, th I think it's quite a positive response. Yes. Okay, are we content, therefore, to note the response? And I'm sure the government will have noted our observations about the minor printing changes on the way through. Thank you very much. I think that uh, completes the agenda, and I can now close this meeting.